So guess which workshop we are in on the road to Knoxville today. One of the baddest, <laughs> arsest outlaws there ever was, Andy Hillenberg. Thank you for coming on the road to Knoxville, mate. Oh, you're welcome. It's, uh, it's going to be fun. How long has it been since you've been behind the wheel of a sprint car? Um, it was, uh, let's see, November of 2001. So however long ago that was. <laughs> And you pretty well got to the point where you just knew that that was going to be your last year. Yeah, we did. It's just, uh, it's just a long time, you know. I was out there for 17 years and uh, had kids at home and getting older and uh, we lost our sponsorship and things yeah. just, that's about, just about the way it happened. It was just time to quit. Yeah, and you were saying you were at Lernerville or something like that and you just sort of went, this is it. Yeah, we were at Lernerville and it was raining again and... <laughs> We just uh, decided that that was, uh, you know, that was it. That was I decided we were going to quit, and we stuck with it, and I haven't been in one since. And your wife said at the time, you bumped your head, you're not going to quit. Yeah, I told her, I said, I'm done, I'm going to quit. And she said, oh, you bumped your head, you ain't going to quit. You'll never quit. And I said, yeah, watch this, we're, <laughs> we're going to. Well, it's probably one of the smartest decisions you ever made, but I wish you hadn't because... It was always good having you in the series, mate. Well, it was fun. I, I, I mean, there, it was some great times. We had some really good times, and, and I had some good, really good friends, and unfortunately lost a couple. And um, so, but uh, it was great. I, I would do it all over again. So, a lot of the best stuff happens on the road, doesn't it? Between the races, as much as it happens at the track. It does, and it seems like the older you get, the better it is. You know with your friends and and you find out really who your friends are and so um uh, we've we've had some good times there's steve and i've really had some good times over the years so i i, I do miss that end of it and you had three of the most iconic liveries in outlaw racing i mean the the stp car was just that was a super deal at the time as much whether it was as big as it looked it looked huge for the sport it was great it was great and it was it was actually it was really good for the sport because of who was behind it um those guys at first brands they were total race people every product they had was on a race car somewhere and uh and you know we had richard along as he had he was starting his driving school and and that went on the front wing and it just it was that was some fun times really fun times the black and gold leaf stuff though i mean the christner trucking car the the lux air car as you said everybody associated you after the stp with black and gold leaf and that's always badass right and that that's where i started you know back in the day when i used to drive for my dad all of our cars were black with gold leaf numbers and so it was fun to get back to you know it's fun to get back to that color were you always going to be a sprint car driver andy i don't know you know uh I think one thing led to another, and I ended up and I didn't want to go to college, and, <laughs> and so um, I just started doing it, and I just, I don't know, I just kept on going, you know, and it ended, ended oh, it'd be quite some years. When you win, eventually went out on the road with the Outlaws, were you like, holy cow, are we doing this, or were you always committed to, this is what I want to do? Um, no, actually, when we started doing it, we we actually thought are we really going to keep on I yeah. mean, this is pretty uh this is pretty crazy and uh and then like i said we did we kept on and we never quit so and he had a phenomenal record for the most amount of a mains contested consecutively over 500 that's something to be very proud of yeah i, I and i am and because that was before provisionals mm, so, yeah um so that was uh that was that's pretty cool um I I wish I could say I won some of the big races, you know, but unfortunately we never did really get to win many of the big races and so, uh, but yeah, that, that is something cool. I mean, 30 main events, you know, in your career, a lot of people didn't get to anywhere near that amount. So you certainly won your share of races, but like the Kings Royal, the Knoxville Nationals, all those ones that you, you wanted to win, they were hard to win, particularly with that big guy from Bloomington in the way. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was in my way a lot. And, uh, I remember in the early years, Bobby Davis was you know I ran second to him one year seven times, and and uh, he was really going good at one time too. And so I remember remember a lot of that stuff. And I, I wish we could have run won Eldora. I wish we could have won Knoxville Nationals. I think we did win the rest of them. So um, you know the, the the I guess now the smaller races you call them. 
So, but I never did get to win those two. You, you know, as an Australian, Andy, you know, open wheel was our only real connection to American racing. That was the way we found out about it in the in the eighties and you know, into the nineties. And you put Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, on the world map. No one outside of Oklahoma probably knew where Broken Arrow was except for you. Well, it wasn't that. <laughs> It wasn't, that, it wasn't very big in 1980. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet, yeah. <laughs> Today we're well over 100,000, so uh, it's a pretty good-sized place nowadays. But, um, yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't much going on around here when we started racing. Yeah. Um, your favorite track? Eldora. Okay, why? Uh, I just wide open up right next to the cement was just, just my favorite. Do you have a favorite guy that you raced against over the years? Is there someone that I'm not going to expect? No, I, I think that's probably who I like to race against is the ones that did respect. Yep. Um, I'd have to sit down and think about it a little bit, but I mean, there is, there is quite a few that I really like racing with and some weren't outlaws, you know, even there was some in California Yep. and there was some in Pennsylvania and um, I really enjoyed racing with. In that period when you were on the road, there was always, and there still is, the rivalry between Pennsylvania, Midwest, and West Coast. In your opinion, what was the toughest part of the country to visit as an outlaw? Probably, I would say probably Chico, California, hmm. and um, probably Williams Grove. Just right off the top of my head, that's what I would, I would think. You know, when we went up in Ohio, some of those tracks were really, really slick. Yeah. So, um, those look there are some guys up there pretty tough racers too yeah absolutely were there nights where you wondered what on earth made you want to drive a sprint car i mean the outlaws it had to be brutally tough some nights well we couldn't um around here we couldn't race enough you know we got to race uh the local race tracks and then we had that ncra circuit that we ran but other than that we couldn't race enough so if you if you wanted to race more that, that was your only choice it's unfair to compare eras because it's hard to to make that comparison but man the mid 80s through to 2000 when you said when you were out on that road banging the the highway down what a brutally competitive era of sprint car you take steve out for a second everyone else had their game together mm -hmm. yes i agree and I, I i see the times now i i realize that they're that the cars are as a group are much closer together but and not taking away from anybody, especially Donnie Schatz. I mean, the guy, I mean, he's yeah. great. I mean, my gosh, look at what he's done. But, and I think that some Donnie would even say this, but back in, back in that era, I saw Steve Kinzer do some stuff without the equipment that yep. was impossible. So, um, I know the argument will always be there, but it won't be there for me. No, fair call. I mean, when you think about it, Dave Blaney was, you know, was, Phenomenal. I mean, Sammy was phenomenal. Wolf was still getting around and rocking the place. Absolutely. The wild child was always in there. Jeff Swindell was always in there. Like yeah. you just, yeah, like you said, so many great drivers. There was, there was, there was really some, really some good dirt drivers. It really was. I remember too when Lance Blevins sort of blasted onto the scene as well, and he had SDP on board. There's another, you know, great Oklahoma talent. So you know Shane Carson on the other end of the experience scales, yeah. and now you look at you know Darren Pittman, Shane Stewart, those guys, uh, Harley White. There's so many really great Oklahoma drivers have come out of this state. And, well, there's quite a few more than yeah, and, and I know you mentioned. I only missed just a couple, yeah. And you know you got Bacon, and then you got yeah. Chris, Christopher Bell, and. And all those guys, every person that you just mentioned, raced 10 miles up the street here. Really? Straight north of here. Wow. So that's where they all came from. And Brady's having a heck of a year. I mean, Bell is a rare talent. I sort of put him up in the last, and if that's, un if that's unfair to say, I apologize. <laughs> but I think I put him up there with Kyle. But Brady's doing a hell of a job. Good. And you would have raced against his dad back in the day too, yes, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, race against his dad and his dad. Really? <laughs> he must have been just a kid, Andy. Yeah, his dad was named, uh, Leon's dad was named Ted Bacon. He raced as well out here at the local track. Wow. You must have been just a baby then, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd like to do it all over again. What is? What was the toughest part about it? Was it the travel or was it just finding the money to, to do it? And what was Ted like? I've got to ask you that shortly as well. Well, um, having enough money well, to do it and being able to maybe waste some money, if mm -hmm. you'd like to say that, yep. um, that would have been nice. The other tough part was obviously the travel. I mean, 
in 2000, I think the year before I quit, I ran 109 races. <sighs> and I don't know how many they're running today, but they ain't running that many. And um, yeah. so the travel, and then, you know, I think if you ask the question about Ted, I think a lot of guys, especially uh, my age group, I think a lot of them has changed their mind. Mm -hmm. um, Ted Johnson was, he loved it. He breathed it. He loves sprint cars, and I think people are actually now that after he's gone have have seen that. Um, I the guy was a great friend to me. And look, every major form of motorsport that has reached the top has had a benevolent dictator, one man at the helm. Bernie Eccleston, Bill France, they were all individuals calling the shots. Yeah, and somebody that was actually at the racetrack and liked it. Yeah, absolutely. So, Knoxville, it's been a while since you've been there. We, you had one visit, what you said, three years ago. And then before that, where have you been, Hillenburg? Oh, I don't been messing with these cars. And, and, uh, and the wife and I take a trip or two, you know, a year. And, yep. Um, my kids are all grown. I got grandkids, and Jeez. so I'm staying plenty busy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a look at your cars here in a minute, but you are going back to Knoxville uh, in this beauty, I'm guessing, right here. When are you leaving? Oh, uh, whenever it's not raining. <laughs> it's not going to rain, Andy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know. I'll probably get out. I guess the man needs to be there by Monday so he wants yeah. to see what's going on. It's going to be so good to have you back, mate. Let's have a look at your cars in just a sec because you have some beauties. 